Hello boys. It's time again to change the oil in the old Kubarinsky. Boy, it's hotter than the blazes out here today. I think the, the heat index is going to be up around 105. Uh, I came out at daybreak this morning and gave the old cub a bath. And uh, I thought, well, sneaking up on 25 hours since the last oil change. So I guess I might as well go ahead and do that. There's nothing really exciting about changing the oil, but I guess I'll go ahead and document it for maybe some of those viewers that never have uh, seen it done on a Lycoming engine. So let's just gently take the bottom cowl off. Now, after we get through changing the oil, we'll go get some solvent. Uh, so we'll take that opportunity to clean the firewall and clean the engine. Now this is also a good opportunity to look around that engine. Uh, see if you can find any dirt dauber nests and stuff like that. Here in Texas, Oklahoma, Oh, New Mexico, Arkansas, Arizona, I think maybe Arizona, I'm pretty sure. You know, in the summertime, we've got a problem with dirt daubers, and they get everywhere. Those things, you've got to cover up your fuel vents, or I cover up my fuel vents, um, and my... Uh, uh, crankcase breather tube. Look at that. One right there. Pesky things. They get everywhere. Now oh, looky there. Uh, so anyway, make a thorough examination of your uh, engine compartment. It's also a good opportunity to look for any cracks or Anything that may be going wrong on the uh, the motor mount. It's also a good opportunity to look over your intake tubes and your exhaust manifold and exhaust pipes. So we'll go ahead and check the old girl out for Dirk Dobrinsky's and so, well, look at that. <laughs> There's another one right there. Foot. Boy, they'll get on there overnight, too. So anyway, I'll go ahead and do that off camera. Okay, checking the exhaust manifolds. Now, <clears throat> this particular engine, th this is the Lycoming 0235 C1B engine. And uh, every so often you've got to uh, check the valve clearance and adjust that if it needs it. But I've got an annual coming up in uh, September. Um, I've got an annual coming up in September. So that's when I'll do it. Now I did have, at one point, uh, a really lengthy series on doing an annual on this airplane that I lost. Uh, some of you guys may recall that I lost about 15, 20 uh, videos. Don't know how I lost them. Right off the uh, YouTube channel. Gone. And... Uh, among the casualties was that annual. 
And you know, I thought that was a pretty interesting series for, for you guys. Um, what it's like from an AMP's perspective to do an annual inspection. So, you know, come September, um, I'll probably, uh, I'll start thinking about it now, and I'll probably do a series on, on doing a complete annual inspection on this airframe. Look at that, boys. You know, and it hasn't been that long when I had that cowling off and changed the oil. It's amazing, those dirt daubers, boy, they are industrious little pests. Intakes all look good, no signs of any leaks on the intake or the exhaust. No cracks that I can see. Dirt dauber residual dirt here, there, and yonder. I guess I should probably recap my breather tube. Keep those doggone dirt daubers out of out of the breather. The crankcase breather. You know, not to disparage the man that built this airplane. Uh, when it came time to put that cowling on there, boy, oh boy, he, it was like an afterthought. A uh, cobbled up bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm sure he thought it was a good idea to have those wires over there to, to hold the top and the bottom pieces together. Uh, when I first got the airplane, it had a starter generator landing lights, nav lights, everything you can imagine. Great big monstrous battery, uh, ring gear, uh, and all of the associated uh, belting and all that malarkey. I think I told you all once before, I went on a weight savings program and, and eliminated 71 pounds off of this airplane by taking all that junk off. And I bought a used PA-11 nose bolt. I bought it used because a brand new one is good gravy. It's well north of a thousand bucks. So I got a used one, and that was for a hefty price too. And I was going to re-cowl this airframe. And then I got sick, uh, you know, with the hernia and the cancer. So I haven't gotten around to it, but that is one project I would like to get around to before too long, if I can. Okay, we'll remove the safety wire on the drain, uh, on the drain plug here. And back over here, we'll get our finger up in there and clean around up in there. And we'll pull the uh, screen on the back of the engine and clean it. Come on, baby. I need to go get my good pirate pair of dikes. Why, oh, you son of a gun. There we go. Mama mio. So mama mio. Come on. There we are. I need to go get my good dikes. One momento, please. Go get our bucket and drain that oil. Now let's hope this doesn't get everywhere.
Now we'll just let that drain for about 15-20 minutes. Then I'll go back there and pick the tail up and uh, let it drain a little bit more to get all of the residual out of there. Now let's see if the screen here has got any debris in it. Little finger screen. And it looks clean as a whistle. I'm going to throw that in some solvent, clean it up a little bit. Okay, now that we've got the screen clean, we'll put it back in. Now don't forget to put a brand new crush washer on that. Now, <clears throat> I've worked on a lot of these uh, Lycoming engines, and one thing you'll find on that particular uh, fitting right there is people, they don't have a one and a half inch wrench, and they'll grab their channel locks and go to wrenching on, uh, on that with their channel locks, and they just chew them up looks terrible. It's not workmanlike. Alright, that's good enough. And we'll put our plug back in. Next up will be the the other screen. We'll take it out of the back of the engine. Don't get carried away tightening that up either. Uh, for fear that we'll strip that out. Tough trying to do this looking through a viewfinder. Alright, let's get that screen out of there. Okay, we can see carbon up there. Let's take a magnet, see if we've got anything metallic. And that is nothing but carbon. We don't have any any steel in there, which would indicate um, a camshaft or a, uh, a crankshaft. Don't see any aluminum. Oh, we're looking we're in pretty good shape there, boys. Okay, I just sprayed the inside of the housing with Berryman's carburetor cleaner, and uh, it's looking good. All right, now I'm going to run my finger up in the uh, up in that screen housing and see if I can find anything. It's clean.